Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So I'm currently in the process of attaching the track pads here to the conveyor belt on there to form the actual track. Um, I've finished making up all of these. I think I made about 350 of them. I'm not going to need that many, so it's good to have extras. Um, I've found the track. That's just regular conveyor belt. I think it's 3 eighths of an inch thick. Got it from the junkyard. I was able to get enough. I think I, it's about 25 feet long. I don't need quite that much, but so I'll be able to trim it down to wh whatever I do need in the end. Um, as you can see, that's the one complete track, one of the two completes there. So I've, I've finished making that, finished, well, at least attaching these to it. I still have more to do to it. Um, so I just want to go over the uh, um, specifications of these track pads. This is the original prototype section of track I made that I showed you earlier. As you can see, the, the track pads I'm using now are much thinner. These are, I think, an inch and, a se and seven sixteenths wide as opposed to two inches. Um, eight inches long, three quarters thick. Um, I cut a taper in there. I think that's 11 degrees. That's an 11 degree angle in there. I'll um, explain that why I did that later on. Um, I also cut a little angle on the edge here. Just, I don't know, that's not really necessary. I just felt like doing that. Um, so right now I'm, I've started making the, attaching the pads to the second track. So I'm gonna show you how I've been doing that. Go over here. This is a jig I made up. This um, is to allow me to put the um, track pads in here. I put them in here so they can, it holds them in place, evenly spaced. They're spaced half an inch, by the way. Same, same as the prototype. And with this jig, I can do 13 pads at a time. There's 15 spaces in here, and the last two will are for the last two that I did on the um, actual, that I've already done to keep them lined up. So if I just finish putting these in, I'll show you guys how that, how that lines up. Some of those are a little bit tight and they need a little bit extra motivation. All right, so as you can see, I've got them all in there, lined up nicely. There's no, no possibility for them to wiggle out of place. They're fixed in like that, so very, very low chance. I haven't had any problems with this from, from doing that whole section. It's been working very well so far. So now, I'll take this section of track that I've already made, move this down to the last two pads that I've put on, and those will fit into the last two sections here. Now, now those are securely fitted in there, and that ensures that the end of the conveyor belt here will be aligned with the new track pads that I have not yet um, screwed on to. So then what I'll do is I'll clamp down that side, this side over here, with this, put this piece of wood across and those two couple clamps over there. Um, it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit to get them, the belt centered. So I'm gonna center that right now, then I'll come back to you when I, after I've got that done. All right, so now I've got this end clamped down. Now this end's not gonna move at all, and this end's not gonna move at all. So I know this is gonna be lined up until I'm finished with this. Um, as I said earlier, this section of conveyor belt is six and a half inches wide. The track pads are eight inches wide, so that um, leaves three quarters of an inch on each side because that's where the, the drive sprocket that's gonna drive the track, the teeth are gonna go in, in here. Though it'll, it'll like interlock into there, and that's what that's what'll drive it. You'll see later on my later videos. So now, um, you can't see on the um, video, but I have marked the spots where I'm going to drill the holes in here. With the, I just marked it with like a sharpie. It, it's hard to see; it blends in pretty well, but I, it's good enough for for me. So that's what will work. What I use to drill the holes is 
this, um, I think that's an eighth inch drill bit. I've made this spacer here to set the depth, make sure I don't drill any further than an inch. So I don't drill, actually drill through the track pads because I don't want to drill all the way through. I just want to drill enough for the screw to go in. These are just one inch wood screws. And there'll be six of these on each, holding each track pad in. I'll show you over here. Um, you can see there. So there's, they're in the tri they're in like a triangle formation on each side. So there's, there's two along the edge and then one closer to the center from each side. That reinforces the end, make, end makes it very strong because that's where the, the teeth of the drive sprocket are going to be putting a lot of stress on the pad. So that should be, that should be enough to hold it in. So now what I'm going to do is drill those holes and then I'll get back to you after I finish drilling the holes and then the next thing to do is put the screws in. All right, so I got all the holes drilled now. What I'll also do is use this compressed air to clean out underneath here from the sawdust that gets stuck in between the, the wood and the conveyor belt, because I don't want that to be in there. Underneath. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll get a handful of these screws here, and I'll just put them on the holes there to get get ready for when, so when I am ready to screw them in I can just go all along them this will make it quicker all right so as you can see I've got all the screws in place here in the in the holes I drilled earlier now I just need to screw them in All right, so now that I've got all the pads drilled in, or screwed in, sorry, um, now I can take off this clamp over here. All right, so now what I'll do is, I've got them all um, screwed in there but it's really tight and I can't just take them out um, by myself. So I got these two screwdrivers that I'll use just to pry, to pry them out like this. And now, I've got 13 more track pads on there. Just need to repeat this process until I have the, the full length that I need. So that's it for, that's how I put the track pads on. Um, they're, what I'm doing now is, so these, these are the ones I have left to put on there. Those are um, piles of 13. And I put, I think, 150 pads on each track um, that's a little bit more than I need which I don't know the exact number I need yet but I know that's a little bit over so that, that should be good um, next thing I'll do for the track is I need to make um, these guide teeth here that go between the road wheels to keep the track aligned on the ground so it's not 
it's not going like this whenever I try to turn or something and popping off the wheels. So I haven't even made these yet. So I'll have to do the, that and then put those on and then also do something to reinforce the bottom here. Um, something, something metal to take the wear because the wood will wear away over time. Even though this is oak, it's extremely hard, durable wood. It, it'll, it'll still wear over time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And if you're just coming across this channel, this is one video in a longer series showing the construction of my 30% scale ISU-152, a Soviet World War II era tank destroyer. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos about the tank and other cool stuff.